Good evening, everyone. This is Clara with Card Stampin' with Clara. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you haven't joined me before, I'll uh, let you know who I am and what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm back to show you some more cards if you joined me before, and if not, I'll show you some cards for the first time. Uh, before we get started, uh, if you would please push that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate that. That helps me and it helps you to be notified when I put videos out. Um, so you don't miss any if you enjoy uh, stamping uh, cards and what have you and sending them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I just want to mention that celebration is coming to a close. And if you're interested in getting free products with purchases, then um, you need to do it between now and the end of September because after that, you won't have an opportunity. And then the other thing is, if you're interested in joining Stampin' Up! as a demonstrator, you can um, join now for $99, get $125 worth of product, choose a bundle worth uh, anywhere from forty to sixty dollars of uh, stamps and dies, and one of you have one of twelve choices. And um, if you just like to make cards and you're not interested in selling product, then you just can get a nice discount if you join as a uh, demonstrator and purchase. It's three hundred dollars a quarter, but if you Take your discount, it turns out to be $240 plus shipping and handling and tax. Okay, uh, enough said about that. Um, the only other thing I need to mention is I have a host code. If you should need something and you purchase under $150, please use that code. If you uh, should need more than that, then certainly uh, take advantage of the stamping dollars that... Uh, you can earn, uh, you can get $15 worth of free product with a $150 purchase. So, uh, all that said, let's make some cards. Uh, I kind of try to get that out of the way so that I don't forget later on. But um, anyway, I know that uh, card making is what everybody's interested in. So, let's, let's look at the cards here tonight. And I'll show you the one I'm going to be making. It's this Christmas card. It's from the Beauty of Friendship Bundle. Um, it's done in red and gray and uh, white. And then on the inside, it's got May You Enjoy the Peace of This Beautiful Season. So that's the card I'm going to be making tonight. And I will tell you briefly about these others that I have been making, most of them, since yesterday. But... Um, I'll let you know a little bit about where they came from and how I put them together. So just, just a brief overview to kind of give you an idea of some things that you might do other than just the card that I'm making tonight. Um, this is one of the stamps out of this set. It's called, um, this is a, a, I just put Happy Holidays on here, which came from the um, Gingerbread Sweet um, stamp set. And this paper came from the, um, let me flip it over here and make sure that I tell you right, Painted Christmas. This is from the Painted Christmas paper, and I put the same sentiment on the inside. The uh, color that I'm using as a border is the Evening Evergreen on this one. I used some of the little shimmering sequins, too, to kind of dress it up and give it a little pizzazz. The second one that I made is also made with that same stamp, and I did what's called second and third generation stamping on this one, which means you ink up your stamp and you stamp the trees closest to you in the darker color, and then you stamp again, and then you stamp again. So that's how I got this one. Um, the Merry Christmas there is a sentiment from the sparkle of the sea, but excuse me, sparkle of the seasons stamp set. And uh, this same sentiment I put in is from the Peaceful Cabin uh, stamp set. That one also was done in Evening Evergreen. This card, um, 
is a, is a stamp from the um, Beauty of the Fr Beauty of Friendship. These, these trees are. I embossed them in gold after I sponged um, an area here. I used um, Daffodil Delight, maybe a little Mango Melody, and uh, Calypso Coral, believe it or not, and blended it in there. And um, as you can see, I had used some tape to tape it off to to give a skyline versus a snowbank. So um, this is just a thinking of you card. I didn't put anything on the inside, so it can be used for any number of things. And this makes a pretty fall card. This card, um, I used the smaller trees, and uh, I gave it the appearance of uh, the four seasons of the year, uh, spring and, and summer, or spring's in and summer starting here with this one, and the fall, and then winter time. And the perfect sentiment for this one seemed to be the one that was in the elegantly said um, stamp set, and it says, life has changed for you, but my love and support never will. So I thought that was a good way to express what, you know, the changes that uh, happen in the seasons also happen in our lives. And I was able to stamp right on top of this uh, balmy blue, and I used the evening evergreen for the ground color and for the border color. And then you can write whatever that is appropriate in this one. This one is a birthday card. Um, the I Believe in You is the same sentiment out of the Beauty of the Friendship stamp set. And the tree and the little birds and everything came from this same set. And um, I used the Bedazzling. Uh, it's a um, paper that is that you can get for free if you purchase $50 worth of product during celebration. And But I put the bedazzling in behind the um, Early Espresso tree there. The color is Early Espresso. And then I used the Soft Succulent and the Evening Evergreen on this one as well, and then the Little Gold Birds. And I, as I was making this one, I thought, um, this I Believe in You will make a really nice card for our oldest grandson come January uh, to an amazing grandson, happy birthday. And I thought that would have, be something that uh, maybe he would appreciate. He'll be going off to college in about another year. Um, this one is a sentiment from the same Beauty of the Friendship bundle, and it's um, Friendships Refresh the Soul. I made it look like a fall card. This is a pumpkin pie. I stamped some green in behind the evening evergreen. Then I stamped some pumpkin pie on top of that so that it gives it the impression that it's a fall tree with the early espresso. And this is a little uh, bit of the um, baker's twine, uh, linen baker's twine. And on this one, you can write anything that you'd like on on it as well. This one is just a hello card. Um, this paper came from the um, peaceful, uh, peaceful, excuse me, I can't read my own right, present, presence. That's a, <laughs> I scribbled it down, then I couldn't read it. That's bad, isn't it? Um, Anyway, I made this into a hello card. It also has a um, look of the fall and changing leaves. And uh, frankly, I just cut that trunk because it seemed to me like this was an awful big um, top to a tree for the tiny little um, trunks that they had in this set. So maybe that's too much. I don't know, but... Um, that's not the one that comes with it. it. You can, you know, you can use a smaller one. Um, cut me out a couple of little blue birds. I put one here and one here. This is uh, the crumb cake layered on top of the early espresso. And just a simple hello. Okay. Now then, I'm going to show you uh, these sets that we're using tonight. And then we will put this card together. 
as I have said a half a dozen times already, this is the Beauty of the Friendship uh, Photopolymer Set. And there again, you can see I've been using it. You get two images of a large tree and then the smaller ones, or you can kind of make that one look like a fur, which is what I did in some of the Christmas ones. Uh, it says, thinking of you, I believe in you, hello, thank you, friendship refreshes the soul and you truly inspire me. So I think I used almost everything. There was a couple of the sentiments that I didn't use from this one. And the dies that come with it look like this. You have this big one, and that just cuts out a tree like uh, we're using tonight. And that band around the outside, I guess, is just for st stabilizing the die. Then uh, you have a border die to go around the top that I suppose that you could put over this tree. And the smaller tree here. It cuts out the um, the one that with the, um, you know, without the branches. And then you have these others that do the same thing uh, as far as cutting out foliage. Um, this is the two little birds that I love so much. There's a uh, rectangular die that cuts out. You can cut out a sentiment with it. And I guess I was using the other one and did not put it back in here. But the one that I'm using tonight um, also comes in this set to cut out this Merry Christmas here. Okay. In addition to those to that bundle, and um, just remember that when they're offering the bundles like this, they can they will give you 10% off. Stampin' Up will give you 10% off when you buy a bundle. Um I, uh, I used um, the third largest die in the rectangle set, and I'll show you in just a second how I used that. And I also used the largest size um, with the tiny little holes that's in this beautiful ornate layering. Um, they're called ornate layers. And this is such a pretty set. It's been around a little while, but it, it's still very, very helpful, and, and I love it. Uh, this is the peaceful cabin that I got the sentiment out of for the inside, and then the little Merry Christmas was just the right size out of this peaceful uh, deer set. Now, what I wanted to show you about the two uh, dies is this before we start. Um, you'll need a piece of uh, real red cardstock, and that's to cut this border. Um, and, and the way I, I cut it is by putting the outside layer of the ornate layers, and then the uh, second die that I'm using is the stitched rectangle die. And I'm going to run this through my machine so you can see how it, see how it cuts apart. It'll take me just a second. The only thing you have to be careful about this is is to make sure that when you uh, put your dies together that you get them spaced evenly. Okay, I'm going to take off this post-it tape that I used to hold everything in place and you'll see how it comes out. A quarter of a sheet of paper cardstock is just big enough to um, do this. Well, I didn't run mine through real good one time, and sometimes with my machine, it works better to run it through twice. So it's not, well, you see. Um, I forgot to, I was talking and I forgot, but this is the part that's gonna come out, and then it'll leave you with this pretty little border. Like I said, I'm sorry, I forgot to run it through a couple of times, but you get the idea. But that's the way you that's the way you can cut you a border like this one. All right, let me get my little packet here if I haven't managed to lose that. Okay, let's 
I don't think it'll take long to put this card together. I cut some extra little birds there again. And I thought with this uh, color scheme that the little white birds would look nice. I used um, the same sentiment on this card. I stamped it in real red. And this is basic gray underneath. And if you notice, I have rounded the corners on this. Um, I don't always round corners, as you know. And I want to show you what I used to round the corners. It's called the Trio Punch, Detailed Trio Punch. And this little thing right here that is the, is the corner that... Um, will round your corners. You just slide your paper in like that. And as you can see, you, you take your hand and just pop it down and it, it trims it right off. And then on this side, it's got this pretty little design. And you do the same thing. You just slide your paper in there and snug it up. And um, this makes really pretty decorative corners. I use that on the inside of my cards a lot. And then, if you need a hole for something, you can slide your paper in this way and cut a hole. So that's that's how we round corners at Stampin' Up! and make some pretty little designs, too. Okay, that said, let's put this card together. Um, you will need, of course, this basic... Um, size, you start out with the five and a half by eight and a half, which is a half a sheet of cardstock, and you score it at four and a quarter. And then after I scored it, I rounded my cor corners before I put these um, layers on the inside. And I just, uh, it's kind of thick when you do two at a time, but you have to do two when you're when you're doing your card base for these, I just uh, I just did them one at a time. So you're gonna need a piece of uh, basic white that is uh, three and three quarters by five. You'll need a piece of basic gray that is four inches by five and a quarter for this part. You will need a piece of real red cardstock to be able to cut this out of. And um, <clears throat> it, uh, it's just big enough, if a quarter of a sheet. Uh, you just have to be careful when you tape or you, you put it on your cardstock to make sure that it's not, this part's not hanging off the one edge or the other, one end or the other. This is a piece of uh, the um, paper that comes out of the Peaceful Place set. It's so pretty. I think this might be my pretty, uh, my favorite design of any of the Christmas paper I've seen this year. Um, normally, I am going to be cutting a piece that is three and three quarters by five, but in this instance, and only because this die is longer uh, and I need the extra quarter of an inch. I am cutting this paper initially at three and three quarters by five and one quarter instead of five. So um, I want you to, to be sure that, that you take notice of that if, you're, if you've been following me before. So I'm gonna lay this up here and we will start with this tree and cut the tree and to cut the you only need two birds, but I like to have a couple of extra in case I drop one or something goes wrong. And uh, this little sentiment uh, that comes from the peaceful deer, and this is the, I don't know what I did with that other little rectangle. Ah, there it is. <laughs> okay, I cut uh, this little Merry Christmas out with that little die, and that, that comes in that same set beauty of friendship. Now, I hope I have told you all the things correctly that I'm supposed to. And um, what we're gonna start with is the tree. After you get everything rounded and everything uh, stamped and what have you, and you're ready to put it together, 
then just dot you a little bit of glue and this is a little bit tedious but I decided that I would uh, do this and for you know for you to watch so you know just put a little bit I, you know, I guess some of the statements that I make are probably, you know, somebody's saying, duh, you know, how, <clears throat> you know, what, what would you, maybe that they think I uh, am being, um, oh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, too simplistic. Um, it's not that that uh, I, I, anybody that has that has stamped for a little while would know all of this stuff, but bear in mind, there are people out there that when you're getting started, it's just not the same as after you've stamped for just a little while, you know so much more and uh, how to approach things. And, you know, why should these other folks um, have to stumble around the same way that maybe you or I did in the beginning. And, uh, you know, let's help them out a little bit, even if it does seem kind of uh, redundant or what have you. All right, I am going to try to center this tree um, as best I can. And I am making it go all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm just tapping to, to make those branches lay down. Okay. I think that's good. I started out thinking that I could put another gray border around this. And uh, it just wasn't enough to look nice. Let, let me just put it that way. So I decided not to put it on this one. Okay, there's plenty of glue in there. It didn't want to come out, but it's in there. For the most part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my glue on the solid part of the uh, frame. I guess that's what I would call it frame but I am going to, to kind of put a little bit over on the corners because I want everything to seal down um, you know so that it's not curling up let me put it that way this might need just a tad more on this side okay now the key is to try to get this balanced <clears throat> where it looks nice. And I learned that just about one of these little bubbles all the way around is about what you need. Might have it down a little bit too far. I believe that's going to look pretty good. And that looks fairly even. Okay. And when I say those little bubbles, they're not really bubbles, I don't guess, but you know the little round things there, they kind of they kind of stick over just a little bit around the edge of where this paper ends. So, that's what I was using as my guideline. Now we're going to put this onto the front of the card. I sat here and made cut out trees trying to decide what color I thought was going to look best with them. Um, this background and I finally decided that this white 
gave it a nice look. And this die is going to be, um, your, your borders on the side will be a little bit wider than the ones at the top and the bottom. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a few dimensionals and put on the back of this Merry Christmas. Four ought to be plenty. You know, I've really grown to like small sentiments and small prints because it just seems to me like it's easier to make cards with those than maybe some of the real large ones, unless that's going to be your main focus. Okay. A little bit thumbs, all thumbs here tonight. I hadn't really planned to do this tonight, and sometimes I get a little tired at night and I say things backwards. I, I think in the last video, I realized I was, I had said, I thought I had said gloomy in it, and it said, Boomy or something, something silly. I don't know why it came out so wacky, but uh, that happens to me sometimes. Okay, I thought that the, the little sentiment looked nice down here at the bottom of the tree. See there, I'm dropping things. I guess as long as I can pick them up, though, it'll be all right, won't it? Okay, I thought a little bird at the top and a little bird at the bottom would look nice. That's not the one I need, I need this one. I really like the fact that the little birds um, are turned where they'll go in both directions. I like that a lot. You can balance things out that way. Okay. Okay, and we have another card, folks. That was pretty fast. If you decide you want to um, decorate your envelope with this pretty paper, uh, just cut you a piece that's two and three-eighths inches by six inches. That's usually enough to cover an envelope. And put you some, take your tape runner and put the tape on the outside of the flap of your envelope. And uh, then put your designer paper down and trim it and you will be good. Um, I will leave some instructions on my website as to how to do that. But for tonight, we're not going to do one. Um, I think that's about it for tonight. I hope this has been helpful. I um, appreciate you stopping by and um, taking a look at the cards, and hopefully it's been uh, beneficial and then it'll give you some ideas um, as to, you know, what you might create for yourself. And like I said, it's this is just to give you ideas. It's not, um, it's not the only way that cards been, but can be made by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I would remind you, if you haven't pushed the subscriber button, please do that. And um, if you've got any questions about celebration or um, the um, products that you might get for free or what have you, if, uh, if you can look on my website, on my homepage, and the information is there, if it's unclear to you, Give me, a, a, you know, send me a, a message and I will try to clarify anything that I can for you. 
Well, folks, that's about it for tonight. Uh, let's, it's almost the end of the week, so uh, I hope you all have a nice weekend, and I will be back real soon with some more cards. Thank you.